Well, that was really cool. I just went to the Sandin Museum and had a sneak peek around. There was a lot of really interesting things in there. And uh, it was a really neat spot. This actually, at one point, this waterway was all covered up with a boardwalk. And they had like a sluicey thing running underneath the boardwalk. What an interesting place. I'm glad the rain never hit me too, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I thought I was in there for so long that the rain was going to come and get me. I don't know though. Like, what a tough lifestyle. It's not for me, I'm much softer than that. <laughs> And yeah, I can't imagine. Uh, can't imagine all the stuff people went through for some bucks. We love them shiny rocks, don't we? Not sure what else I should poke around and see. This is the power plant up here. I'll go check that out. Battery's almost dead. This is the local liquor warehouse. That must have been a popular place. Wow. There goes my battery. All right. Later days, but this is really interesting. Yeah. Oh, my batteries are packed up in my luggage, so I'll change it when I get to the cusp. But. Maybe I have just enough to get a little bloops. Yeah, I'm glad I came here and checked this out. It's really interesting. Maybe I'll peek my way inside there. I'm supposed to see where this trip goes. I wonder if like old timers walk this trail. Super cool. Well, I'm not going to film anything inside because I don't think museums are really like that. And your admission money kind of like helps them stay open. So if you want to come see it, come see it. It's only five bucks. <laughs> it ain't bad. Pretty good value. And it's a super interesting place. There was 10,000 people living here at one time. It blows my mind. All right. I'll talk to you later. All right, that was super duper neat. I enjoyed snooping around and checking it out. Like history, I'm a nerd for that shit. Even though I know 
the modern lens history can be a little problematic. I still really believe if we don't remember it, we'll repeat it. Um, we should learn. We should learn from the mistakes we made. Well, I started out today being really early and wondering what I'm going to do with all the time I've got. <laughs> now I'm a little bit behind. But that's the nature of the way I do shit. I don't know, that was fun. And I'll still be at Nikos by 3 o'clock or so. Shouldn't be too bad. I'll be able to help. But yeah, this is super interesting. They're even talking about like a mayor or some big politician you dude back in the day talking about all the prostitution that was up here. And the gambling and the and the loose women. <laughs> I was wondering to myself if I'd be a gambler or a loose woman. Probably a loose woman. <laughs> But he was talking even back in the 18, late 1800s about legalizing prostitution. Being like, you know, just had a really progressive attitude towards it. That's cool, we're still working on that one. It's like, people have been fucking since the dawn of goddamn time. <laughs> I don't know why making a bloke pay for that shit is illegal. It's a, a great way to make a living. Often said, uh, being a sex worker would be an awesome job if it was done in a way that could be safe and lucrative. I think they said all these buildings here at the at the entrance were the brothels. Well, first thing you see when you come into town. <laughs> my favorite little bridge. <laughs> Never been to Europe, but I would imagine that's what a European bridge looks like. I'm on my favorite little strip without anyone in front of me or behind me. Pretty cool. But, uh, yeah, hey everybody, I'm just making my way back from Can West. What an amazing event. I had a really great time. I absorbed a lot of information from other people's travel stories and uh, how to do it and just like a lot of inspiration a lot of inspirational people not a single person there would tell you not to give it a go <laughs> and that's really cool because I don't really know anybody that does what I like to do uh, usually people are like, aren't you scared? Why would you do that? Why do you want to do that? You shouldn't do that. That's dangerous. You'll get killed. <laughs> and um, it's just cool to meet people that encourage you to do these things. And get out and see the world and meet people and not listen to the scary stories about all the ultra violence. Alright everybody, I'm here, I think this is Aberdeen Lake, pretty fucking pretty, the Tim Hortons cup sitting there, oh this driftwood is super cool, I just kind of stopped to turn on the camera, I don't know if I'm even going to use this but I kind of like this camera angle, <laughs> so I thought I'd get some of that, this road's been actually really busy today. I was trying to get this done before I um, get that camera mounted. Sorry, it's hard to get it mounted to my backpack. <coughs> but yeah, I was wanting to get that done because I had passed a trailer 
truck towing a trailer. That was dusty and a little sketchy because you wouldn't give me a freaking ounce of space, douchebag. I don't know, man, if you're just kicking up a huge dust cloud and blocking someone from driving like 10 kilometers an hour because you're in a big ass truck and all your dishes are rattling. <laughs> just, you don't even have to pull over, just stop for a second and let me get by you. Keep charging towards a hairpin and make me dive to the inside. Like, what the fuck was that, bro? That would be cool to have on video, I guess. But yeah, I haven't had anyone come up behind me. But I passed a lot of people going the other direction. But I'm having a lot of fun on this road today. Yeah, uh, Crichton Valley Road, and I was like, almost a little. <laughs> I'm already escalating, but it's already a little like disappointing because it was a little too easy. I like this one because it's a little bit more challenging. Yeah, I don't need a ton of a challenge, but um, the course I took through Pacific Riding School and then the refresher I had at Can West it's just giving me a bunch of confidence that I didn't think I had. I actually went through a huge sand pit that they have at the Cusp Campground. And uh, I was part of our training was to, was to navigate some deep sand and I've never ridden in sand <laughs> like that before. It was nuts. And the Somi barely made it. But we powered out. We did fall. But so did everyone. I don't think I fell as gracefully as some. <laughs> some people have a really good like stuntman roll going on with their... <laughs> but uh, I did a slow-mo like tip him over and then I'm like eh, trying to hold him up. And that's actually probably going to get me hurt more than anything. I should just, he's totally kitted out with all his crash protection, so I should just let him fall and get out of the way so I don't get hurt. Not that I want you to get hurt, Masami, but if I'm hurt, then we're both kind of bummed. And yeah, that was just, that was a really informative class. They did a lot of cool stuff. It's mostly refresher from what I'd learned before, but just to be able to do it again and have a few instructors watching you and riding with you and taking you places and, and some of the challenges were harder than the other ones I faced. So it was pretty cool. I even, um, <laughs> I don't think it was very large, it probably felt more than it, than it was in reality, but uh, I was coming around a corner and some loose stuff and I gave him a little juice and actually I think I did a little, I think I did a little power slide. <laughs> it sure felt like the back end slid out a bit. It was super under control and it was just fun. But yeah, we had a lot of rain, so I'm not sure what to expect on this road for washouts and stuff. But I'm enjoying it. Especially after seeing that guy with his trailer driving. <laughs> wow, you can, you can go a whole lot faster on this shit than a motorcycle. And, uh, it makes it fun instead of a big frustrating jumble or wreck in your trailer. Oh, what a difference. I'm really looking forward to my trip in a couple weeks because I was a little tentative about some of the areas I wanted to explore but I, I don't feel it anymore. And maybe I'm going to get a big slap of reality but I honestly think my skills for this type of riding have actually improved. I don't find it nearly as frightening. Like when I did Odegaard Falls Road, 
I had um, I didn't have any of my training and I thought that was kind of scary and sketchy and then I had my training and I did this road and I was like oh that's kind of probably my limit and then I did the training this weekend and I was like <laughs> I've fucking gone through a sand pit, bitches. <laughs> and like just learning the techniques and like how capable and balanced and stable these machines really are. And they're, they're capable of a lot of shit. They're way, 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 way more capable than I am. I'm learning. I'm learning a lot. <laughs> yeah, watching some of those presentations, I'm not sure if I'm ready for some of the shit some of these people have gone through. Yeah, that's for sure. But there's also. Um, you don't have to make it so hard either. There's also easier ways to get around. Oh, this is really washed out. We got this, Masami. Yeah, look at all the sand at the bottom. Wow. But that's that's one of the strange things that's like doesn't jive with your logic when you're riding, when you see those like really bad patches, your first instinct is to chop the throttle and sit down. And that's that's what I tend to do too, it's just instinct. We, that's what our bodies are telling us to do, or our brain mandates it, we don't even think about it. But uh, it's the wrong thing to do, you gotta stay standing and you, you gotta power through it the more, you don't want to get stupid with it, but if you're carrying speed, you have more of a gyroscopic effect. You're actually going to stay up a bit more, which I think was my problems when I dumped in the mud puddles is I didn't get a good run at it, and I didn't, wasn't going fast enough. But I also can't see what's in the water, so it's a little scary. Water crossing is scary. But I am getting more and more comfortable with the bike, just doing whatever the hell it wants to do underneath my body. <laughs> and, uh, more like, more like, uh, not necessarily an operator, but what are those people called? Do they, like, just kind of, like, watch everything? Sit at their control panel and make sure nothing fucks up? Almost more like that. The bike's kind of taking care of itself. You just gotta maintain some of the inputs, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, I'm kind of talking out my ass. I just think it's fucking fun as hell. <laughs> I really like it. And I'm really happy I, I started doing it. And I really probably wouldn't have if I, if I had started with a bigger motorcycle. Because a lot of the girls and women I was talking to at this event have gotten bigger bikes and, and they, they struggle with them a little bit. So they were all really keen on the Sami. They were like, what? Oh, that's a perfect bike. And they're like, oh, I really was contemplating getting one of those. But um, yeah, Charlie was just little 300 pounder like he was so easy to take around to all this thing and opened up these types of environments for me to explore even though he was nowhere near the right bike for it but if I had had a big bike like the SB650 was what I was looking at originally I probably wouldn't have even started riding on these then maybe I wouldn't have even gotten an adventure bike because the 650 would still be more powerful than this bike. So uh, I'm sure in my mind I've been like, well, it's a downgrade. I need a GS. <laughs> There's a lot of GSs at the event. They're sweet ass machines. 
But yeah, this is <laughs> this says a lot about uh, adventure motorcycles and just the riding community in general. But when I got to Nakasp on Wednesday, it was pouring rain. Like pouring rain. It was coming down in sheets. And like I was it was soaking through my waterproof gear here. It was just it was that bad. And uh I barely shut my bike off when a group of people underneath a tarp that had set up already were like yelling at me to come out and they're like, Come over here, come over here, come here for a sec. And I was like, Oh what? Like, am I doing something wrong? Or they're like, No, go have a seat under the tarp. It's nasty outside and then we just sat and chatted for like two hours because we were waiting for the rain to stop. Like otherwise I would I don't know what I would have done, like you grab my tarp and just sit at the picnic table or hide in the bathroom because <laughs> they had a they had a washroom facility but yeah well, it's really sweet like I've never been I never really felt that like welcome at a at an event or at a place or Oh my god. really kind. And beautiful human beings there, that's for being sure. Uh, I'm gonna make this way too long. I can't help it though. This road is just fucking cool. And like, <laughs> this will take, this takes me to Vernon. Like, what a cool way to go to Vernon! <laughs> I love it. You okay? No, I bottomed out and busted my gas lines. So oh shit! Gas. There's a couple guys I know back at Ideal Lake. They might be coming in another hour or so. And they're going to Kelowna. Fuck. But I got enough food here for, fuck, I could stay here for a week. You'll be okay. I'm not mechanically inclined at all. That's why I got a big freaking metal plate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually out here looking for a four-wheel drive van that was high clearance. Oh. I've done this with fucking this car so many times. I'm not even panicked about it. I can stay here all. I can stay here for a week, like I said. But the couple guys that might be able to give me a tow into Kelowna. Oh, that's awesome. I'll get someone to drive me to where I can get south. Come on, I'm not even worried about. It. I'm just camping here for the night. Beauty. Yeah. Why not? I got the stove going. You got water and everything, you're all good? Yeah, like I said, I got enough shit for a week. Awesome. All right, well... Well, thanks for stopping. Yeah, no, I would want someone to stop if it was me. What is this, a BMW? No, it's a Honda. It is a Honda. CB500. So it's not uh, not going to set the world on fire, but... No, but it's always going to get you there. That's what I'm hoping. Nice bike. Yeah, I love it. I'm having so much fun with this thing. It's uh -huh. I'm, I'm finding all sorts of places like this to hang out and camp in. So I've got a book. Maybe you, I don't know if you know about these books. Yeah, the Backroads Map Book. I have the app, and uh, yeah, those are that's an amazing book, right? Yeah, this is just for this this area. Yeah, they have a whole bunch but for I've different got, areas. I've got around Vancouver and I've got uh, the Kootenays, which I've never been to. Ah, uh, the Kootenays, Once you'll I love get, it. Okay, yeah, that's what everybody tells me. Once I get sick, that's where we're going. But anyway, what okay, yeah. do you know about these? Yeah, you bet. Yeah, I just came from an event in the cusp called Can West. It's all like an overlanding group meeting and they give you tips and it's all bikers and people in vans and okay. shit. And yeah, and the Kootenays, you'll love it. Awesome. Well, I'm glad you're okay. I'm sorry for the yeah, problems. I my car like a, the, 
I've ripped off every mud flap. Yeah, I <laughs> can see right there, yeah. I think this place's jeeps are afraid to go and this is why what happened. <laughs> that's why that's why I ended up getting this last year. I had a little street bike that I took in very inappropriate places. <laughs> yeah. Well I'm actually I drove here from Toronto. Oh, yeah, I'll tell you. Because there's a bunch of dealers around Vancouver. I'm going to get a Japanese right-hand drive vehicle. Oh, cool, like those Mitsubishis or something? Mitsubishi Delica. That's yeah, cool. dude. Those vans are oh, awesome. That. And, uh, yeah, anyway. Cool. Someone at the event had a Sprinter van. Through this. I've bottomed out so many times. Yeah, and you have to go really slow, right? Yeah. That's no fun. <laughs> okay, well, I'm glad you're okay. Kevin, by the way. And Kevin, my name is Love. Rob? Love. Love. Yep. Nice to meet you. It's me nice to meet you road. too. You take care of yourself. There's the guy who was broken down a month ago. <laughs> <laughs> Take care! So you check out what this weekend has done for me. <laughs> On my way here, I saw a guy broken down and I was too scared to stop and say hey. Not for meeting so many fucking awesome people that love to hang out in the woods. <laughs> I stopped to see if he was okay. I'm fucking useless when it comes to fixing shit. But just to make sure he had water, he's alright. People are coming for him. You know? I think that means a lot. I would sure want someone to do that for me. So. Nice guy. But yeah, I'm sure he'll be much, much happier with a Mitsubishi Daisy Evan. Fucking folks like. Oh, that's so sad. If I had some JB Weld or something, maybe. Something, something like that. Yeah, you could think to have just in case, anyway. Fucking hot wheels! There's a lot of them in a row. Anyway, that's probably a great way to end this video. Meeting a stranger and saying hi and helping him. That's going to be the energy I put out from now on. And one of the presenters was saying that too. She's like, it's not hippy dippy bullshit. It's like what you put out into this world is what you get back. She's like, I'm fucking 100% confident in that. And she was saying she was out for days and didn't see anyone. And she dropped her bike and 15 minutes later someone came driving around the corner and helped her pick it up. And shit like that's a reality, really. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys next time. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I still want to go and do that little rip through Washington back up to the good news. That's a, that looks like one hell of a route. Uh, yeah, a couple of weeks I'll be hitting the road and I'll bring y'all with me. You can see what a uh, ride down Revisoke Mountain in a, in a luge looks like. <laughs> what a the horse looks like. Check out Parkerville. Go back to Bella Coola. Get on a big ferry. We're back to Vancouver Island. I'd like to see you. Bye!